This is Numeric and Scientific Python in one playlist. We're going to go through these topics right here, uh, but we'll divide them up into individual videos that are about 10 minutes or so each. We're going to start with uh, these topics right here. Okay, just start with variable types, console I.O., file I.O., plots, and functions. And uh, we're going to go through uh, in using the Jupyter Notebook for this. Now, if you don't have Jupyter Notebook um, with the IPython, uh, you can use any um, you can use any Python package for this. But if you just go download Python, it'll give you some tips on downloading. Uh, probably the easiest one to do is this Anaconda. So if you select Anaconda, um, and then you can download. Um, it has some downloaders for Python 3.6 and Python 2.7. So either one will work for this tutorial. If you don't want to download anything, or can't, you can always use it from a internet browser. Just go to try.jupyter.org, and then in the right here, select New, and Python 3, and you're off and running with a new Python notebook. But since I already have it installed on my computer, I'll go ahead and just uh, start it down here. Type Jupyter and Enter, and this will run a little black uh, console here that will show um, what's happening. You don't want to close this one. If you do, the web page will become unresponsive. What you can do is just go ahead and minimize it. Okay, and it brings up the um, this root here. Okay, right on my desktop. You may need to change to your desktop. Come over here to new, and I'm going to do a Python uh, notebook. Okay, so there I have it. Go ahead and minimize that. Don't close it. Um, and then come back to your uh, Python console here. The first thing that we want to do is just go conda info and if you uh, hit control enter you'll see the Python uh, version that you have. This one's Python 3.5 conda version uh, 4.2.9. Okay so that's the one we're working with today. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is um, let's go ahead and do some uh, file IO. I'll go ahead and bring this uh, list back up just so as we're working through it we can see what we're going to be working on. Uh, and I'll go ahead and put this off to the side. We'll just have our uh, lists as we go along. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is uh, variable types. And just looking at some of the variable types that we have in Python. Um, I'll go ahead and move this over to the side just so we can see that as we go along. Have a little tracker that takes that goes with us. Okay, so the very first thing that I'll do is, um, you know, I'll just say x equals two and y equals three. Okay, and then if I do x plus y, then I get 5. Okay, that's the output. Sometimes you also want to do, um, for example, print x plus y, and then that just says uh, 5. Okay, but let's say I change this to a 3. I'm going to get an error because I'm trying to add a, an integer and a string. So right there it says integer and string. You're trying to add those together. So either I need to convert this one into a string, and then I get 2, 3 or I need to convert the other one into an integer. Okay, so don't confuse string or numbers and integers. I forgot a parenthesis there. Okay, and there's five. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is, um, you know, variable types. We also can have something like a list. Okay, and let's just check out the type of Z. We have a list. We can also have tuples. Okay, I'll do one, two, three, and let's do a, a type of, uh, oop, I did two there, W. Okay, so that's a tuple. Instead, we convert convert those uh, back and forth, uh, convert from a list to a tuple. Okay, and a tuple to a list, for example. Okay, or we can convert it. Uh, the one that we're going to be using here is going to be actually NumPy. So to use NumPy, we import NumPy as MP. Sometimes we just put this at the top. Okay, and then we do array um, one, two, three, and let's make that uh, equal to Q, and we'll do type Q. So let's not confuse this with these. Okay, so that's a, a NumPy array that we're going to be dealing with, and uh, so those are the different kinds of arrays and lists and tuples that we can deal with. We're typically in this uh, tutorial, we're going to be dealing with uh, NumPy uh, lit, uh, arrays or vectors or matrices. Okay, so those are the types and how to determine the type. Uh, the type is just to go ahead and do type 
of that variable and then it'll show the uh, the type of that variable okay and make sure when you add things together like x and y that they're compatible okay let's talk a little bit about uh, input and output briefly uh, we're going to talk um, you know first of all just about this console uh, input and output right here um, let's go ahead and uh, clean that one up um, and uh, so the first very first thing you want to do is just uh, print hello uh, world okay the classic print first print statement of any computer programming language but let's say we think this is maybe a little too impersonal um, so we're going to uh, say my name equals input and then we'll do name okay so instead of hello world here we're gonna do hello my name and we'll just have to put some addition signs there okay to add these strings together to concatenate them so we're going to put them together by putting my name right here okay so we have hello john instead when i ran that it input it asked me for an input and so i typed in john and then it said hello john okay so that's uh input and output just from the console from the command line uh that's in the uh you know with print and uh the input statements okay so let's go on to the next one now uh, the next one is going to be, um, you know, about uh, some of the file I/O um, that we want to do as well. Um, so let's go ahead and just talk about uh, the basic commands. We're going to have a file ID that can be any variable on the left, and I'm going to have message.txt, and I'm going to put that as a open it as a, a writing mode. Oh, so I want to be able to write to it, and then when I do uh, write, I can do um, you know writing to a text file okay and then I do FID and close when I run that um, let me go back down here I have message text there's writing to a text file I'll go ahead and leave that open for when we do the next part so we want to do a second line as well and uh, the important thing to remember is when you write a second line um, let me just go ahead and say uh, second line um, and uh, let's say I want to be able to look at this um, as well after I write it and I'm going to go ahead and open it back up again but I got to open it up in uh, read mode so I'll do R instead and I'll do FID dot uh, read and this is going to be my message okay and then I'll do FID close and let's print our message Okay, so we have this second line that didn't show up on a second line, and we can see that here as well. Uh, do we want to reload it? Yes, it didn't show up there, so you got to make sure you put in slash n, and then that creates a new line. So slash n is um, creates a new line, and then you have it on the first second line. But if you only want to read in one line at a time, okay, and then you can do that again. Um, let's say I don't want to close it yet. I want to print each message as I read it in put this in a loop for example I'll show you loops in just a little bit I read in each line one at a time with read line okay so that's how you uh, create files let's talk about numpy now numpy is going to be a little bit more about that we're going to do import numpy as np and the very first thing we, we might want to do is just go ahead and look at the version and do two underscores there and then two underscores um, at the back as well and then you'll see the version of numpy that you're using uh, you can also do numpy dot version dot version although this is just a little bit more outdated uh, outdated you want to use the underscores instead um, okay so let's go ahead and just uh, use numpy we're going to use uh, just x equals numpy dot linspace and this is going to create linearly spaced values between 0 and 2 times np.py. We're going to use the pi value from that as well. NumPy is a class. It has variables like np.py and it has functions as well like np.linspace. They're going to create uh, linearly spaced um, variables for us. Okay, and uh, we're going to then say y equals np.cosine and cosine of x. And if you print out x and you print out y, 
there they are a lot of values um, okay now if I want to change this to only be five values then I can see I only have five values between 0 and 2 pi but I might want to have more just for plotting so I'm going to do 20 that third argument is optional which is the number of points you want between the starting and final point okay let's go on and uh, just go ahead and save this now we want to save this data we talked about file um, output we have messages there but let's say we have some data that we want to save as well I'm just going to say my data is NP and I'm going to vertically stack it I'm going to vertically stack the X and the Y points and then uh, now they're row vectors we'll go ahead and just print um, let's just have four values here just so we can see them a little bit better and, um, and so I have X and Y printed let me go ahead and just print data as well, just so we can see what's going on. I've stacked those together. And then the other thing I want to do is take data and transpose it. Okay, just going to make them column vectors instead. And then let's go ahead and save those. So I'm going to use np.save, uh, save txt. And I'll save uh, data dot txt oh by the way I we are on to file IO I forgot to mark that okay so uh, data dot txt and we're gonna save our data and then uh, the very next thing we're gonna do um, well let me go ahead and run this and then let's go check out our new data file right there uh, there it is okay so we had our message and our data file with the values just uh, spaces that delimit those right there you can also um, set it up so they're comma delimited instead. Um, let's just check and see if this works. Delimiter equals comma. Okay, and go back to our data file. Oh, great. We got commas that separate those files, uh, separate those values. And let's come back here and then do another one. We'll just say z equals load text. So we'll load that data file back in, that very same one that we just. Um, that we just wrote and then let's go ahead and print instead of data now uh, we'll go ahead and print z instead okay oh load text oh i need np dot load text okay there it is and it still didn't like something let's see oh i need to say that the delimiter equals comma There you go. Okay, so we've got that back in. If you just leave the delimited it equals comma off of both of those, it'll still work. Okay, so we've written, uh, read, and written those um, back in. Um, let's go ahead and do some things with plotting. Let's just keep this example around, and then we'll create our very first plot uh, just from this data. So we have, uh, we don't really need these now. We're just going to uh, do some plotting. Things that we'll need to do in um, the IPython notebook is uh, at plot lib inline. You don't need this if you're using another environment, um, but just for uh, map for the Jupyter notebook, in order to be, have the plot show up in the web page, you need to put that line in there. Okay, map plot lib and dot pi plot. I'm going to shorten this as plt. And then the very first thing that we do, the very basic thing, is just plot x and y. And uh, let's see if this runs. It creates a nice plot for us. But we only have four values there. Let's go ahead and increase that to 100 instead. You have a very nice cosine there. OK, now what we want to do is go ahead and start changing some of this. We can change the color. OK, change that to red. We can change it to black, uh, green. OK, um, let's say we want to add them as dots instead. Okay, change them as dots. Uh, put a line in there. Can't really see the line. Let me reduce the number of points there. Okay, so there's our line. And we can do dashed. And we can do, there's the dashed. That was more of a dotted line. Okay, a lot of different ones that we can choose. Okay, points with the dot. Okay, so all these different uh, varieties. If you need help with that, just do help plt.plot and it'll show you a big long help thing with all the different characters and what they mean and then also the different colors right there as well okay so if you ever need help on a function just type help 
and that function name, and it should bring something up there. Okay, so there's our plot um, right there, but let's say we have a new Z around, and this is our sine. Okay, so we have sine and cosine, and uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and, um, okay, we've got X and Y. Let's do Z as well. And let's go ahead and put those on the same plot. So here's X, Y, and Z, but let's say I want to change these. Okay, there's the red and the green. And then let's make this plot just a little bit, um, just a little bit nicer. So I'm going to remove some of these spaces, move this one up. I typically just do all the importing right at the beginning uh, so it doesn't get in the way of your other code. Um, okay, and let's add a label to this because we don't really remember. Maybe we don't remember which one's sine and cosine, just looking at the plot. Okay, and also add a label to both of those. And in order to have that show up, you've got to add one additional thing. Um, which is plt.legend. Okay, and if you put a location in there and say, just put it in the best place possible, then it's going to put it um, in the best place, okay? Uh, not in front of the lines. Uh, let's say we also want to truncate this, um, the x limit, to be between 0 and 2 times pi. Uh, it kind of clips it off there. You can also adjust the y limb as well. Okay, so there's uh, there's plots. I want to show you one other thing as well. If you need to create a subplot, uh, let's go ahead and create these in separate windows, a two by one. The first two arguments are the uh, rows and columns, and then the very third argument is which one you're plotting to. Okay, and then I also need to copy this legend one for the first subplot. Okay, so there's our first subplot. There's our second one. We're going to put the xlim. Um, on both of them as well, just so they're just kind of synchronized. And run that again. Okay, so I've separated them into two subplots. Looks a little bit nicer, especially if you have a lot of data trends, you can stack them like that. Um, if you did subplot, let's just change this from 2, 1 to 1, 2. And there we go, we put them kind of uh, to the left and right of each other. Okay, so we just did uh, plots right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and break right here, and this will be our first video in the playlist.